Vice President Amin, Minister Panjaitan, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor to join you today. The issue of financial inclusion in Indonesia is very close to my heart. Over the past decade, I visited the country several times in my capacity as a UN Secretary General Special Advocate for Inclusive Finance for Development. I have very fond memories of the inspiring discussions I've had with many of you, and I consider it a privilege to have met so many entrepreneurs and smallholder farmers who welcomed me into their working environment and shared their stories. All these stories evolved around the same basic needs, the ability to earn, to protect yourself and your family in the times of crises, and to build for the future. These needs have become even more urgent during the COVID-19 crisis. By launching a national strategy for financial inclusion in 2016, President Widodo showed vision and leadership. Financial inclusion became a priority with considerable results. Many contributed to the country's progress, and it has been a pleasure for my partners and I to support Bank Indonesia, OJK, ministries, and other agencies in their efforts to leverage digital technology and include more Indonesians into the formal financial system. There are so many fine examples. Combining social assistance with the use of digital technology has nudged many people towards opening and using a bank account. Agent network systems such as Lakupandai and El Kade provide access in hard-to-reach areas. And digital finance firms in Indonesia offer solutions that cater to previously underserved customers. Sometimes the most innovative solutions come from untraditional places, such as an agribusiness, an e-commerce site, or a raid hailing app. They have helped many Indonesians into the financial system through digital solutions. These efforts have proved extremely valuable as Indonesia, along with the rest of the world, whether it's a challenge or the ongoing pandemic. Research shows that countries that previously invested in digital financial services respond better to the COVID-19 crisis, both for the short-term relief and for the recovery efforts. We have built a solid foundation, but our work is not done yet. We must now ask ourselves, are the newly included able to benefit from services such as savings and insurance that help them build enduring resilience? And how can we remove any obstacles which may prevent small and medium-sized enterprises from choosing digital solutions? A study found out that prior to the pandemic, 28% of MSMEs in Indonesia had an online presence. This has risen to 44% since. So, the pandemic accelerated the process, but there is still considerable room for improvement. Micro and small enterprises are especially reluctant to join online marketplaces. They experience technological barriers, and they're not fully convinced by the benefits of being online. And they are concerned that fees might deter customers and getting taxed could lower the profit margins. To stand a fair chance to compete with large players, small businesses also need better terms for manufacturers, vendors and distributors. Fintechs are particularly well placed to respond to these issues. It is important that fintech firms and digital platforms provide tailored solutions for micro or small businesses. These include back-office support and digital and financial literacy training. It is also important that these businesses are provided with financial services that truly meet their needs, not only payments and working capital credit, but also equity, long-term loans, savings and insurance. Their increasing data footprint can really help with this. Governments have a strong role to play in developing a vision on the future of the digital world what the standards should be, and what underlying infrastructure is needed. Standardizing technology offers small businesses the opportunity to take a giant leap. A good example is a QR code Indonesian standard, launched in 2019. Public investment is needed to build a reliable digital financial infrastructure, such as digital identification and mobile connectivity. And then, there's ever stronger need for consumer and user protection. The spread of digital currencies and super apps 
will heighten the risk of data security, privacy, and fair and sustainable credit terms. We must watch for predatory lending, high-risk trading in cryptocurrencies, and algorithm biases. Regulators have a pivotal role here. They should be ahead of the curve in approaching technological advancements while closely monitoring the risks. This could be done in close coordination with strong fintech associations like you have here in Indonesia. And also by engaging with other regulators, be it on data privacy or security, telecommunications and others. I'm confident that Indonesia will continue making great strides to advance financial inclusion and economic inclusion. Fintech innovations can be of great help if we use them safely and sensibly, always keeping the user interests in mind. A common goal is faster economic recovery that improves the lives of all. That is the focus of the summit. Thank you very much.